the study of organic reactions is all about the exchange of electrons between different building blocks in Lewis structures. In this video, we're going to take a look at the dynamic behavior of the building blocks. And in particular, we're interested in how building blocks can either donate or accept electrons. We call the former, which give their electrons away, electron sources, and the latter, which take electrons onto themselves, electron sinks. And what we'll see is that there are common structural patterns in the generalized building blocks that suggest electron sources and sinks. Let's get into it. In enumerating the electron sources and sinks, basically we're going to ask the question, how can an atom either donate, if it's a source, or accept, if it's a sink, electrons? And let's begin by talking about electron donation from sources. So electron donation from sources is pretty straightforward to understand once you realize that the things that we draw on Lewis structures, the component parts, bonds, and lone pairs, are electron sources in and of themselves. And there are three different types. There is the lone pair, which can simply be donated itself to an electron sink. There is a single bond, which can serve as a source of electrons either for atom X or atom Y, and we can indicate that by drawing a curved arrow like so. And there is the pi, or multiple bond, which can be either a double or a triple bond and can serve as a source through its pi electrons. So there again, n, sigma, and pi are the three types of electron sources. And to see those within Lewis structures is as simple as seeing the drawn elements. Now, electron sinks are a little bit more difficult to spot, but the fundamental question is still the same. How can an atom accept electrons? Well, let's begin with probably the easiest sink to spot, and that's the six electron building block. Notice that the total electron count of this guy is six. In the six electron building block, the central atom X can serve as an electron acceptor simply by taking on a pair of electrons from a source. So I'll just draw a pair of electrons as a general source here, and we can draw that coming in and associating itself with the central atom to establish a building block that ultimately has eight electrons. And let's say here it takes on a charge of negative one after inheriting that extra pair of electrons. Now the total electron count is eight, and that's great for the product. And so the six electron building block is one of the most common sinks. And we call this A because the empty atomic orbital on X is characteristic of this building block. What about building blocks that have eight electrons? Can these serve as sinks? And the answer is yes. The idea is similar actually to the sigma and pi sources, except instead of the electrons going forth to form a bond to a sink, the electrons in the sigma or pi bond land on one of the atoms of which the bond is a part. So for example, for a pi bond between X and Y, the atom X can serve as an electron sink here by inheriting the two electrons from the pi bond. We call this electron sink pi star, since the pi bond is breaking, and a source will donate its electrons to the atom Y. Analogously, for a sigma bond, the sigma bond can break, giving its electrons toward the ultimate electron sink, which is the atom X, and a source can donate to the atom Y. And we call this sigma star because the sigma bond is breaking. These are the th three types of electron sinks, A, pi star, and sigma star.